Hey guys, after a lot of trial and error, I've settled on a go-to configuration for adding night vision and low light capability to a rifle. I have two guns set up in this way right now, one of them using the D-Ball I2 9007, the other using the D-Ball D2, but every other aspect of the configuration is the same. They both have the laser mounted in the same position, they're both paired with a Surefire Vampire light mounted in the same position, and they are both using the same Surefire dual lead tape switch mounted in the same position. But I'm fully aware that this is a really expensive combination of devices, and the lasers that I'm using aren't even particularly expensive. You could spend way more money than I did if you stepped up to something like a Maul or an Engal or a Raid XE, if you can get your hands on those. Let's go over the components of the configuration you're seeing right now, and we'll talk about what they all cost. The D-Ball I2 9007 is actually discontinued, but Kosher Surplus, aka Custom Night Vision, bought up all the remaining supply, so you can still buy these for now. Current cost of a D-Ball I2 is $900. The weapon light it's paired with is a Surefire M300V, so the single cell version of the Vampire Light. You can usually find those on sale for about $400. Most likely the one you'll find is the newer M340V, which has the built-in swivel mount instead of the old-school scout style mount. I like the vampire lights because you can rotate the light bezel to put the light on either white mode, IR mode, or safe mode. The theory behind the way I use this light is to leave it in white light mode when I'm not using night vision, so during the day or dusk hours. If for whatever reason you need quick access to white light, you have it right there. When your nods come out, that's when you rotate the bezel to safe, so you're no longer at risk of accidentally discharging your white light and illuminating yourself or giving away your position. The IR light function on the vampire lights is tertiary or quaternary at best, something that you could use if you really needed some additional flood illumination for your night vision device, but not something you really ever intend on using. Still, it's nice to have. Somebody in the comments is inevitably going to suggest the use of the 100 Concepts light cap, and I wish they would stop doing that. I do have one of those, but it's just not the same thing. The other advantage of the Surefire Vampire lights is that the larger bezel focuses the white light component better than traditional Surefire lights, so you actually get more candela, even though these have a lower rated lumen output than the regular Surefire Scout lights. Obviously, these things get destroyed by newer lights, even the Surefire Turbo series, which have outrageous candela by comparison, and cost slightly less because they're not vampires. Maybe someday we're going to get a vampire turbo, but, you know, you're going to have to bug Surefire about that. I think their current answer is no, don't hold your breath. So, ballpark $400 for the light, but remember that when you buy one of these things, it comes with a Surefire clicky tail cap. You can't plug a tape switch into one of those, so on both of my configurations, I've replaced it with a Surefire DS00 tail cap. This tail cap has a port for a remote switch, and it also has a backup button that you can use in the event of failure of the tape switch. The plug interface is also a lot tighter than the Surefire UE07 tail cap, which just has the remote switch plug and no backup button. The trade-off is that it costs twice as much. You can get one of those UE07 tail caps for about 50 bucks, but the DS00 will cost about 100 bucks. The weapon light is also on an Ari Saka mount. This one uses an inline scout mount, but depending on the rifle that you put this thing on, you might want an offset scout mount or something like that. Basically just a way to tuck the light in closer to the rifle, to reduce the snag hazard, make it easier to fit into a case, reduce the weight over the thumb screw mount and a pick rail section or a quad rail, and also generally just to look a little bit cooler. So toss another 45 bucks on top for the replacement mount. These devices are paired with a Surefire dual lead tape switch. This is the SR07D-IT. Actually, this one is an SR09, which has 9-inch down leads instead of 7-inch down leads like the SR07. If you're ever confused by Surefire's naming scheme, remember that S stands for switch, I assume. R stands for rail. T stands for tape. So the ST07 is a switch tape 7 inches. The SR07 and SR09 tape switches usually run a little bit over $100. So the total cost of this configuration is pretty high, and it could be quite a lot higher. For example, the other gun I have set up in this way is using a D-Ball D2, which is probably about three or $400 more than the D-Ball I2, plus the exact same cost of all the other parts. I wanted to put together a combination of devices that offers the same functionality and ergonomics, but at a significantly lower price. And here it is. This entire setup can do almost everything that the other setup can do, and the total cost is about the same as just the D-Ball i2-9007 by itself. This configuration uses a Holosun LS321R as the laser component, offers the same functions as the D-Ball i2, with the addition of a visible laser for daytime zeroing. 
The output of the LS321R is slightly weaker than the D-Ball i2-9007. It's a little dimmer and it doesn't focus as much, but it still does basically the same thing. It's still a civilian legal laser illuminator. Currently, you can get these things for approximately 700 bucks if you know where to look. The weapon light is a Streamlight TLR-1HL. Normally, the TLR-1 is a handgun light, but this one is the version with the long gun kit. So instead of the usual finger switch on the back, it actually has a remote port for one of the Streamlight proprietary tape switches. And more importantly, the rear assembly can be put into off, momentary, or on mode. This gives us all the functionality that I like from the Surefire Vampire. We can put this thing on safe, we can have it on momentary mode for use with the tape switch, and in the event of a tape switch failure, we still have the ability to use the light with the switch on the device itself. The cost of the TLR-1 HL with the long gun kit is approximately $200. This bundle includes the proprietary Streamlight dual lead tape switch. This has the same form factor and functionality as a Surefire SR07 switch. The down lead for the laser on this tape switch is still crane compatible, so it works with D-balls and hollow suns and basically every other laser on the market. The white light down lead is Streamlight's weird proprietary switch that works with the long gun kit for the TLR-1 series. It also works with their new rail mount series lights, and it also works with the very new ProTac 2.0 series lights, although that light is kind of a joke. One funny little advantage of the Streamlight remote switch kit is that those little rubber bumpers that it uses to hold the switch onto the rail actually have some cable management built into them. All three of the setups I'm showing today use LaRue index clips to provide additional cable management, but the little channels in the bottom of the Streamlight rubber rail grabbers are actually pretty useful. So total cost of this setup is about 700 bucks for the laser and about 200 bucks for the light, which includes the remote switch kit. Technically, we can throw in another, I don't know, $5 to $10 for a small M-Lock Picatinny rail section in order to mount the TLR-1HL, but I'm going to go ahead and disregard that. There's no way you don't already have one of those, right? So I set these things up in exactly the same way that I normally set up a D-Ball and a Surefire light. We have the same tape switch placement. It falls directly under the hand, so you can readily access the white light using the forward button from your standard, most common firing grip. This has always been a pretty important component of white light setup to me. I think it's something that Chuck Pressburg talks about a lot. Essentially, you need to be able to access that white light immediately in an emergency, no notice, no fumbling around, no changing position of your hand. You just move your thumb slightly and you're there. I like the button for the IR laser to be to the rear because that slightly changes the way that I'm holding the gun. It's extremely common, almost universal, for guys to hold and shoot their gun slightly differently when they're using night vision. Especially if you're shooting with active IR illumination, people tend to hold the gun a little bit farther down because they don't really need to see through the optic. So we have the same switch ergonomics as my preferred setup. We also have the same level of redundancy. The laser has a fire button on board in case the tape switch fails, and the light has a switch on board in case the tape switch fails. Like with the other setup, we can also safe this entire system. We can turn the light off completely so it won't be activated by the tape switch. And of course, we can turn our laser off completely or just put the lens cover back on. In terms of performance, this isn't really a downgrade from the D-Ball i2 setup. It's more of a side grade. The LS321 laser does have noticeably lesser output versus an i2-9007, but not very much. They're both still civilian IR units. Of course, this is significantly less powerful than a D-Ball D2, but it's also quite a lot smaller and lighter, and saves us even more money versus that setup. The white light performance is different than a Surefire Vampire, not necessarily worse. The TLR-1 HL has a thousand lumen output, but it's a pistol light, so it's very floody. The single cell Surefire Vampire that I use on my other setups has more candela, certainly, but significantly reduced lumen output, so I don't know. Some people really like lumens, some people really like candela. If you really want a rifle light on this setup, you could use the new Streamlight ProTac 2.0 weapon light in place of the TLR-1 HL. Those have a tail cap that is basically the Streamlight interpretation of the Surefire DS-00. It has a remote switch port as well as a secondary fire button for redundancy. That one also uses the weird proprietary Streamlight down lead. But the ProTac 2.0 is an incredibly large and heavy beast of a light. It also uses a proprietary rechargeable battery. It also has reduced candela output from basically every other Streamlight weapon light made in the last several years. Obviously, if ergonomics aren't important to you, then this entire video is going to seem like a waste of time. But don't let Chuck Pressburg hear you say that or he'll kick your ass. Night vision is an expensive hobby, or depending on how you justify it, an expensive capability to add to your kit. 
I can definitely understand it when guys get sticker shock looking at all the stuff they have to buy to support the night vision device they just purchased. Anyway, it might seem like I'm a little overly particular with the way I like my night vision and low light capabilities to be set up on a rifle, but there's no reason your gun shouldn't work as well for you as it possibly can. We've got all the time in the world right now to get it right, so put a little bit of thought into it, and if the mounting costs seem like they're going to ruin you financially, just remember that there are often cheaper alternatives that can accomplish the same thing. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this channel, please support me on Subscribestar, link in the video description. You'll get access to early videos, bonus videos, archived live show stuff that I do with Mr. Brassfax. But most importantly, you'll make it so I never have to do ad reads for shitty mobile games or weird Ponzi schemes. See you guys next time.